Hi there, my name is Lauren. I'm a best-selling author as well as entrepreneur. And in today's video, I thought we could talk about five skills you need to have in order to be a successful author. And the reason that I have success in quotation marks is because it's an extremely subjective adjective that is ultimately defined by you. Whatever your definition of success, if you're shooting for the stars, if you're staying humble and modest, it's really up to you with how you define success. But either way, based on my experience, based on clients that I've worked with, based on what I've seen, these are five skills that I think all around are just really, really good to have to help you reach your personal goals when it comes to your book, your authorship, and maybe even your brand. Number one is know how to speak about you and or your book. I mean, ideally both, but make sure that you know how to speak on either one of those, depending on which one is more important at the time. So it's all about going beyond the bare minimum when you're answering questions. So like, for example, let's say you're on a podcast or something and someone says, hey, tell us a little bit about your book. It's great to answer the immediate question, but they're probably gonna have follow-up questions after that that are related to what you just said. So why not beat them to the punch and give a really detailed answer that answers the questions that they haven't even asked yet. So, you know, if someone says, Says, Lauren, tell us a little bit about you and your book. I might say, oh yeah, hi, my name is Lauren. I'm a writer, this is my background. I took that experience of working in Yellowstone National Park and turned it into a coming of age memoir all about that experience, you know, talking about what it looked like working in a national park, the other side, you know, the behind the scenes sort of, because I really didn't see many books out there on the shelf that kind of talked about that thing. As, you know, a young adult, a young female, I really loved reading books that had strong female leads, especially when it was in outdoor settings Settings, and I really just thought that I would be providing value by writing a book like that. So it's like you're kind of stretching it out a little bit. That might be common sense to some of you, but I just think it's good to know all around that knowing how to speak about yourself in your book by kind of anticipating other questions people might have and kind of rolling it all into one giant answer. Plus, if you're on any podcast or something, it gives the host a lot more to work off of versus like a bare bones answer like, oh, this is my book. Okay, I guess we're on to the next question then, you know, like give them a little something. It just, it sets you up to be a good entertainer, a good educator, a good participant, whatever context you're in. Number two is a really, really hard one. And I know it is because I've seen people struggle with this. I've struggled a little bit with it myself, but it's practicing shameless self-promotion. Self-promotion is such an interesting word because some people can do it and they can run with it and it doesn't bother them at all, in which case that's amazing. They're ahead of the curve, feel good about what you're doing. But for the rest of us, it might be a little bit uncomfortable, especially if you're in the arts, if you're an artist, if you're a dancer, if you're a musician, if you're an author, right? Because anything that has to do with the humanities, it's for the benefit of the collective, the community, whatever. And to say that, you know, oh, do this thing for me, it can feel really uncomfortable. And I have a couple ways of addressing this. The first is an Instagram post by Carly Waters that I saw the other day, which I just loved. And I think I reposted it to my story or something. But basically she's saying that if you can't even promote your book, why should we? And before I forget, Carly Waters is a literary agent and she is a co-host of a podcast called The Shit You Should Know About Writing or The Shit They Don't Tell You About Writing or something like that. But she's got some really, really awesome stuff. Carly Waters says in the caption of her post, as long as you're acting like a human being online and not a bot, talk about your book launch. There's only good things that can come out of it. In my opinion, you are doing a disservice to potential readers, to family, friends, colleagues who are interested in reading your book by not talking about it, which is maybe a new perspective you haven't heard of before. But she says that no one has as much to gain from you promoting your book as you do. And if you want others to spread the word, lead by example and show them how to talk about your book. Because some people, if you say, you know, ask someone, hey, would you mind doing an Instagram post about my book? Or, hey, would you mind doing a LinkedIn post about my book? or promote it on your podcast or something, sometimes they might take notes from you on verbiage, on the best way to promote it, if there's anything you want them to include or something specific that you want them to say, right? It's lead by example, right? So I just really like what Carly Waters has to say and I just wanted to do a little shout out to her <laughs> as well as her post. And if that still doesn't quite ease the uncomfortableness for you, think about it as you are promoting the book's message, not necessarily yourself. If you don't want the spotlight on you, if you're uncomfortable with having the spotlight on you, which I don't blame you, I can be, I'm sort of like that if I don't anticipate the spotlight being on me. If it, Sometimes it catches me by surprise and I don't like it. So if you're someone who doesn't like having all eyes and ears on you, make it about the book itself, the message, the story, the mission, the vision, the impact that it has, right? Like, hey, if you're interested in a book about this, or if you're 
you're interested in promoting something that I think more people need to know about that I happen to write, these are the ways that you can promote it. So that's another tactic that I've heard for kind of shifting the awkwardness off of you and putting more of the emphasis on the story, on the book, on the contribution. Number three is definitely a superpower that takes a lot of practice, but is one that is incredibly awesome to know, which is knowing how to describe your book in one sentence to at the absolute maximum, right? I've said it before, but I'll say it again. My book is a coming of age memoir all about my experience living and working in Yellowstone National Park as a young adult. It's a bit wordy, but it works. And I've gotten a lot of good reactions with that description. Why does something like that matter? Because the shorter it is, the more straightforward it is, the more attractive it is. That's gonna be really good and attractive for people to help you out with the book. If that's an agent, if you're someone who is writing a book and you wanna get an agent, if you wanna hire a publicist or something, if you are talking with publishers, you know, small presses and you're just representing yourself or telling people how to describe your book if they're wanting to spread it via word of mouth or social media or other types of promotional practices or something. Again, if you're on a podcast and you want the host to mention it, what do you want them to say? It's a really good, easy snapshot into what people can expect from your book. It's just so attractive. There's nothing bad that can come out of a one sentence description with anything. And in the movie business, that's often called a log line. It's just a one sentence description of your book. And often that term is used a lot in the book space as well. Number four is kind of taking things a bit of a step further, which is having a cohesive brand or some kind of identity, right? People really like categorizing other people in certain ways. I know it sometimes is great, sometimes it's unfortunate, some people don't like being categorized like that, but either way, it does happen. And you can often use it to your benefit by telling people what you want them to know about you through different visual elements, through your brand's personality, your brand being you, being your business, being your book. Sometimes they all roll together, sometimes they're all separate. Everyone has their own way of doing it. But a cohesive brand identity might look like colors, might look like logos, might look like font, at least from a visual perspective. And I've got plenty of videos on that if you wanna go down that rabbit hole. It looks like having a defined target audience or readership that you know is going to benefit from your book and brand because the book leads into your brand. Do you want what you have to say to start and stop with the book? In that case, that's fine. It's totally cool. But generally, if people really like what you have to say, it's very appropriate to have something beyond the book, whether it just be check out my website, whether it be follow me on TikTok, whether it be, hey, join this webinar that I'm gonna be doing on this day or tune into this podcast. People want to support other people, especially small writers, independent writers, self-published writers. People really love supporting people who deserve a bigger platform. So by having a better brand identity, it's not only great for marketing and promotion, but it's also really great for representation or for amplifiers, whether that be book marketer, publicists, or literary agents, or publishers themselves. If you're wanting to really kind of go for the gold and go for maybe like a mid-sized publisher, they wanna know that you have a clue. They wanna know that you're professional, that you're prepared, that you've done the work, because because by being self-aware in that way and doing the work up front yourself to the best of your ability, it's gonna make the work later on a little bit more easier for anyone else that you decide to work with, unless you decide to like self-publish and do everything yourself, in which case you're your own boss. Number five was one that I kind of picked up on really early on in my authorship journey, which was having at least a basic idea of how the industry works, of what the norms are, of what the expectations are, right? Because when I was writing my book, which was a while ago, like at least five years ago, I was not only writing the book itself, but I also wanted to prepare myself for any opportunity or person that came my way by kind of studying up on the industry so that when I was ready and I did have something to present and I needed help from someone, whether it be an agent, a publisher, marketer, whatever, you know, I knew how to approach them. I knew how to talk to them. I knew what to talk about. It was kind of like a peace of mind thing where I did my homework on the industry so that I could show up in the language that they like to hear. Roles versus responsibilities is an amazing thing to know as early on as possible to help manage your expectations. An example of this being that if you decide hypothetically to hire a publicist, I hope you know that that means that they're working off of earned media versus maybe advertisements, which is paid media. If you decide to advertise your book somewhere on Amazon or something, let's say, you pay this amount of money, your ad will show up here versus going with a publicist. It's pitching, 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 pitching. And if they're pitching a lot 
on your behalf to different outlets that make sense, depending on your niche and your audience and all these other things, that means that they're also gonna be getting a lot of no's. So don't be upset if you don't end up on Good Morning America or on Oprah's Book Club, because those are very, very competitive slots. Everyone and their mother would wanna be a part of, oh, I would wanna be a part of Oprah's Book Club. So understanding about what publishers do versus what you do, about what is typical for a book launch, you know, if you hire out versus what you should do, anything like that is always going to be really good to know. Trends is also another one. Right now we're in a huge romanticy trend. Anything like Court of Thorns and Roses or that one by something Armentrout. I don't remember her name. Hold on. I'm, I actually, I have her book. Hold on a minute. Court of Thorns and Roses from Blood and Ash by Jennifer Armentrout. It's taking me a while to get into that one. I'm not going to lie. Things we never got over, steamy romance, you know, like anything romance and fantasy, romanticy type genre is, is very, very popular right now versus maybe children's books. Children's books are on a pretty steep decline right now. Some people think it's because we're coming out of the pandemic. Other people think it's because of increased screen time. Nonfiction has traditionally done very well, like historically speaking, but fiction still happens to be taking the lead with post-pandemic book sales. Book sales in general, especially when it comes to print, are still doing very well. It's almost like knowing the weather forecast, and you can find a lot of this information through news outlets like New York Times Books or something, newsletters. I follow Jane for Friedman's The Hot Sheet. I've been a subscriber for the past two years. It's like 60 bucks for the whole year. I think it's pretty good. A lot of it is for industry professionals, but if you really want a deep dive, fantastic place to start. Books are really good for processes and preparation, but not necessarily trends or norms or expectations. I have yet to find a comprehensive book that doesn't just talk about how to get published, so maybe one day I'll write that book. And then following people like Carly Waters, who's a literary agent on Instagram. Locating those people, putting yourself in front of where a lot of those information streams are, it's just gonna set you up so well. It's gonna enlighten you in a lot of different ways, but really that's all I have to say. I think those are the top five skills, habits, characteristics, I don't know, that anyone wanting to publish a book or anyone wanting to be a writer or elevate their authorship, I think those are all really, really good things to know just all around, whether you're nonfiction, whether you're fiction. So I really hope you got something out of this video. If you did, please consider liking and subscribing. It helps other people find the channel. If you find value in it, chances are someone else is gonna find value in it. So it just kind of helps spread the message a little bit. If you wanna check out my Patreon, it's a dollar a month. I have to do that plug. I've just got a couple call to actions here at the end, Patreon being one of them. Super Super cool stuff is happening down there, information in the description below. I've got a couple webinars that I'm doing. It's a series that goes up until like October, I think. They're bi-weekly topics, six topics total. I've done three of them, two or three of them already, so more information on that below. And then if you are a creative entrepreneur slash author in the Chicago area, you should definitely consider coming to CreativeCon this February. I'm going to be there. I want to say hi to you. I want to see what you're doing and what your books are, and I want to help you out. So consider joining that also in the description box. Otherwise, that's all I have. Carry on with the rest of your day. Have a good one. Take care and I'll see you next time. Bye.